good morning everybody so after a very wonderful session from dr baskar shinoy we'll move to another day today uh syndrome i think again it's a syndromic approach as rightly mentioned by dr baskar in the first session and for the next 40 minutes i will try to cover few or four cases about fever hepatosplenomegaly and lymphadenopathy so good morning to everybody so i will not be in a going in detail what is hepatosplenomegaly what is splenomegaly what is lymphadenopathy we'll straight we go with the cases so here i have a case can i pointer please is a 2 year old child weight is 8.4 kg height is yeah so can it be little or you can come somewhere yeah They, they will come forward. Don't, don't worry, please. <laughs> yeah. Here is a two-year-old boy who is a weight 8.4 kg with a height of 82 cm. Vaccinated at the urban health center, and there is little bit of long history. A fever three weeks on and off, and to start with, it is a high-grade fever with chills. Uh, responding to paracetamol, and the child was admitted before 18 days for the fever and loose motion with a diagnosis of acute gastroenteritis with some dehydration. and discharge on day 4 and if you look at the count during their hospitalization he is anemic that is hemoglobin is 8.9 uh total count is 9000 with a poly of 62 lymphocyte 35 and platelet 1.65 lakh he was better for 5 days and again he started to have a high fever again same continuous for more 7 days and during the second phase of the illness and is not eating well is not playing well and somewhat irritable so anyone can take this if you want or i can go further ahead yes dr sonalvin so child is sick all having fever since almost uh, last 3 uh, weeks off and on with a past history of ag and child is also having some uh, uh, other symptoms in form of not eating well and not playing well so we can say that something chronic infection is going on in the uh, child so my possibilities is uh, maybe some chronic infection or inflammatory disorders or it may be some form of malignancy so when fever uh, persists for more than 3 weeks these are these are the three uh, common group of disorders uh, so it has a varied spectrum of yeah. diagnosis so, so uh, and chronic yeah. infection in form of tuberculosis or improperly treated or hidden some occult infection but, yeah, but can it be a, some complication of a acute illness can it be a some prolonged or annual course of a some common infection yeah it may be some untreated improperly treated enteric fever also may be there or maybe some other chronic infection which has not been picked up on routine investigation like brucellosis or something like that we have to yeah. think of yeah i like to add to man uh, this is a child with a sudden onset of high grade fever with chills probably i'll focus on something like uta which was missed for under treated uh, uta or could be an enteric fever because there is an eosinophilia and also child did not receive probably child didn't receive typhoid vaccine and probably this looks like a biphasic illness probably i would like to add some more other elements as we go through the next weeks yeah, okay so child was having a febrile with a tachycardia spo2 98 per ml there is pallor is there and there is abdominal distension but no ascites liver is 6 cm firm in consistency spleen is 8 cm and there are few cervical lymph nodes bilateral 
in posterior triangle form non tender non mated <coughs> and there is no manager signs yeah there is history of uh, recurrent fever one is uh, three weeks duration another acute onset fever so now it is clear there is a biologist there huge hepatosplenomegaly and cervical inflammation yeah so so what are the possibilities can you narrow down the yeah i don't know whether it is from malaria or endemic area possibility you are to always think about the malaria but lymph node enlargement is very unlikely in a case of malaria ischemia is also because there is virus there the chronic infection because three infection tuberculosis typhoid fever infection mononucleosis you only get the large screen here it is a large screen large screen is against the diagnosis of uh, all this condition really you may get but of those typhoid there's a common infection but possibility for this one is with a large screen is very unlikely can it be some hematological disorder and giving us another thing is that two other possibilities collagen vascular disease and malignancy so these are two possibilities that we have to consider from Ahmedabad, urban slum, Bhaipura, Maninagar. Very crowded and poor community. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, by this uh, uh, presentation or examination, uh, your enteric becomes absolutely out. Yeah. In typhoid fever, you won't have uh, so big liver and spleen. And uh, even uh, infectious mononucleosis, not such a big liver and spleen. I think you go towards the possibility of uh, uh, something like uh, Kalazar, which is not an endemic area for your city. And they are not sick looking children, Kalazar. They keep walking to your clinic and they are quite happy, okay children. They are not very sick looking children. So uh, with this, and as Dr. Uh, Keshwan said, cervical lymph nodes, malaria is out. Yeah. So I'll put it as some malignancy may be there in these cases. Yeah. So I'd like to ask a question. Did the child have night sweats? No, no night sweat, no bony pain. Do they have any cow or any 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 in the family? Do they does the child consume raw milk? Not not that risky given. So the stab I said IV fluid started and septrazone was started. And if you look at the counts, it is eight point nine, eight thousand, platelet one point uh, five lakhs, TRP thirty eight. SGPT and SGPT raise, urine is normal, Mentrox negative, and blood culture sent. XHS is normal, USD hypersomalically, mesenic lymph node, largest being 15 millimeter, diagnosis consistent with typhoid fever, and clonical correction is advised. So again, we know that uh, uh, enteric fever is a culture diagnosis, and it's not an imaging diagnosis, so most of the time we will not be misled by this, and or expert already says that almost malaria is out because there is no lymphedema, there is lymphedema, uh, enteric fever is out. So we will think beyond malaria, enteric fever, and infectious between mononucleus less likely. The ultrasonologists stick their neck out and say enteric like. Sir, uh, and cut a sorry figure later on. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are usual words they type, at least in Ahmedabad, I don't know about Delhi. <laughs> So, if you look at the further course, a fever is still persistent, not responding to the manage, and there is now a new onset of arthropathy. There is a pain around right knee. Now, child looks more irritable. There is marked irritability. Also, there is no meningeal signs, no rash, and clinical exam is almost same. So, Dr. Kukraya, what would you now do? Uh, now, this is a child who has got massive hepatosplenomegaly. There is a knee joint involvement. We do not know what exactly it is. And the patient looks ill. All these things and uh, indicates we are having some systemic pathology. And it could be uh, infections like brucella and tuberculosis, which come to my mind seeing this presentation. And But uh, again, I think uh, uh, your lymphoma can present like this. Yeah. <laughs> lymphoma can present like this. Leukemia with the normal uh, platelets. Very slightly low, 1.5. But I think lymphoma can fit in, and two other infections like brucella and uh, um, uh, this thing. Uh, brucella, most common is a sacroiliac joint, then is a hip joint, then is a knee joint. So it can happen in brucella. And uh, is there a history of having raw milk and all? Not, 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 not there. So 
I'll put it more towards number one. But uh, nowadays, sir, raw milk is required for the diet of Priscilla uh, not, because we are using required. so many milk products and we don't know the source of that. It's not required. I had a discussion with Bikaner people. They say yeah, Dr. the cheese is made not cheese, yeah, from yeah. raw milk. Raw milk, yeah. So uh, that's a big problem. Even we go for the Sambhu so cocoa and coffee, and they give raw milk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not a history. Milkshakes yeah. and all yeah, yeah. So it's now, outside, they yeah. also. Yeah. So now only one point that uh, if you have brucella, can the child be this toxic or no, this no. sick? So, so again, see, yeah. So, so brucella, brucella usually, there no usually there is no bacteria. Usually there is no. Usually brucella and children again came come uh, yeah, walking exactly. and limping. And how about leptos in this case? Lepto. Too low age. Lepto yeah. one uh, unlikely sir. And uh, here, what about a new joint pain? If it is a joint properly, it may infection. If it is a periosteal, periosteal, then it may be infiltration due to some malignancy. So, so because of this uh, arthropathy, we did a PCR, dengue CT is negative, CPK 108, LDA 278, ferritin 189.7, DDIM 58, Bruxella IgM is negative, uh, VCA IgM for EBV normal, HIV non reactive. And would you like to go for TB workup, sir? Anyone? TB workup? Yeah, definitely we yeah. should go for TB uh, workup. So we did TB also workup. that, uh, that uh, two uh, and one, and ECO was also normal. So to summarize, SHS. what is the normal, sir? No, normal, normal. There was no uh, higher end of it. Uh, do you still do Mantos, sir? Uh, Mantos were negative. I, I'm coming to that. Are you still so doing Mantos? Huh? Are you still doing mantos? Yeah, we, yeah, we will do it. We do it. It's a so it's a non-specific one in presence of clinical diagnosis will increase its specificity to some extent. So it's not a throwaway test. It will not be available. That's why. But it is we definitely do it two to you. So to summarize the illness of twenty days and the last episode is febrile seven days. There is hyperosplenic lymphadenopathy. There is low hemoglobin. There is progressive thrombocytopenia. Not that severe. Elevated liver enzymes and investigation. The culture has also been found. Uh, COVID antibody negative, urine culture is normal, and blood culture is sterile till date. So, almost I've given this uh, report to you. And we did. Just go back. I think if you have a ESR which is touching 100, if you yeah. is there, he'll give us three diagnoses. One is tuberculosis, second is uh, he'll give a diagnosis of malignancy, lymphoma. The third is autoimmune disease. Yeah. 3D, yes, sir. Yeah. But the CRP is only 38. More fitting towards uh, lymphoma. You can even have in Sojia, you can have a CRP that's low and the ESR that's high. But in Sojia, there will be thrombocytosis. Usually, that is thrombocytosis. There is leukocytosis. Not always. What Unless it is complicated of mass or something, <laughs> else, most of it is a thrombocytosis. Sojia, sir. And you, you look at the ferritin only in the 200, 300. There is marked hyperferritinemia as well as dystogia is concerned. Dystonia is still a positive. So we did the lymph node biopsy and the standard for the JDN step for AFB. Lymph node biopsy, there is reactive hyperplasia. So no granuloma or caseless necrosis. So Dr. Kukre, there is no lymphoma as well. So, so again, brucellosis. They have to consider because it can present with. Uh, but would you not like to go for the bone marrow biopsy, something like that? Lymph node biopsy can. Bone marrow. But Brucella is not same. No? It is negative. Still, is negative. We are awaiting for the blood okay, culture. But uh, sometimes. Uh, it is coming. Yeah. I've, I've done, done it. On the third day, it is negative. So we repeated the CBC again, that is drop from 8.9 to 8.5 gram, platelet have from 1.5 to 1.88, ESR 90, CRP 52.7, SDP 240. So almost we rule out malaria and trick, uh, EBV, Brucella, serial negative, TB almost not there. We have thought of non-infectious conditions, so all other possibly have it. Uh, so, but negative serology may not uh, rule. Yeah. So, so we did we a need to go for the either culture or PCR or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So we did also CT and we saw that there is a hyperosplenomegaly with multiple small poorly enhancing hypotense lesions, multiple glands in the subcentimeter size in pre cover for para aortic and mesenteric areas, and the possible lymphoma more likely over granulomatous lesion of infective artery, bone marrow advice. So naturally we'll go for the bone marrow, right? In this case. 
And on the day of bone marrow, again, we did the CBC. The hemoglobin is 7.6. Total count 12,800. Let's still low, 98,000. And uh, ESR 67, immature retic fraction 30.8. So bone marrow also does not show any leukemia, lymphoma. So what do you want to know? Bone marrow biopsy. Same. I, we have not shown for the culture. That is the biggest mistake that I have done. I have not sent up bone marrow culture. I should have sent it for the bone marrow culture, but yeah, so it's a message that whenever you're doing a bone, mar uh, bone marrow for any reason, send it for the culture, which I have not done this is. But I was lucky to find something else in the blood. So there is a hypercellular marrow, adequate erythropoiosis, myper hyperplasia, and adequate megakaryocyte. But the blood culture, what was Dr. Kure says, the prolonged incubation, it turned out to be a brucella medianche. So it's a turn case of brucello. So my Dr. Sonalvin, you were telling me, so what are the pros and cons of all the brucella diagnostic modalities? Yeah. So and would you go for the empiric anti brucella treatment in such case? Yeah, so like if you have a strong possibility, like uh, definitely clinical features suggest you of uh, pyrexia for a prolonged period with hepatosplenomegaly, with uh, lymphadenopathy, with uh, epidemiological background like history of consuming raw milk or uh, surrounded by the animals or something like that, uh, such history is there. Uh, we should always uh, send for, for serology. If serology is negative and still we have a doubt about this, we can send. So what are the culture. chances that a child has a false negative uh, brucella serology? Uh, and what is that process is described as? Uh, negative brucella well, serology can be there almost in... Uh, like 20 to 30 percent of the patients, it can be negative in spite of being it positive. So in your college, so what which test would you do? Rose yeah, Bengal? We advise uh, PCR or culture. Achha, PCR or culture. Dr. Yeah. Kukraya? Uh, I think Pika people, some centers are doing that. But uh, our center, can we do a long blood culture? And, uh, many times. So and we sometimes give even a therapeutic trial also. Yeah, because so usually they respond very mm. well to doxycycline and, and uh, rifampicin after it five days. Show, uh, micro Mi microscopy, yeah. So, these are so she told about uh, empiric uh, anti. Uh, one minute, one sir. She told about enteric, uh, uh, empiric. I think for Brucella, I would not give. Possibility. It's had strong. it been a rickety cell case, I would have given because doxy is life saving. But the Brucella, we expose the child to doxycycline, rifampicin, so many drugs. So I think to give or to give a blanket uh, statement that. When the we clinically suspect, we give the empirical anti and I think it's a tall order for me at least. Yeah, I'd like to add, uh, preferably you should not do with a single serology. For Brucella, if you do for single serology, sensitivity and specificity. Sir, so these are three important. weeks of the illness, and why to, do, to go for the uh, second sample? Uh, after four, you need to have uh, at least two titers, four-fold rise, or you need to do SAT and IG, Sir, that is IGG. Point well taken, but the child is already come after the illness of three weeks. Uh, so there might have been the reason tighter. Uh, at the first itself, we would have done Rose Bengal test screening test. Okay. Have we done Rose Bengal yeah, test? Yeah, if uh, culture no, or we would PCR go for the is not idea. freely available, Elisa. I do send serial yeah. brucella. Because so sometimes what happens is the brucella when you use the serum agglutinin test, they abundant of the antibody. Out of them, if the non agglutinating antibody is more compared to the agglutinating body antibody, your Brucella serology may be a false negative, which is described as prozone phenomena. So it's very classical in syphilis and in Brucella. So we end up here with the first case. Another child, a 10 year boy. Here is a short febrile illness of eight days, mild to moderate, intermediate in nature for the initial three days. On day four, the fever uh, spikes are very high grade. Response to parastamol is not that satisfactory. And child also started having generalized macuprose rash, starting from the trunk, progressing to all over body for next five days. There is also an edema. So there is a fever, there is rash, there is edema all over the body, and there is periorbital puffiness, which gradually progressed to involve the whole body. And child is sick enough that is the oral intake has reduced. And before five weeks, there is a short febrile illness of high fever, loose motion with blood in stool, abdominal pain, pain in both knee joints, and some backache. And for that child was received ibuprofen, 
two analgesic that is ibuprofen and naproxen and two antibiotic that is ofloxacin and metronidazole so that is the history so there is a fever there is rash there is edema and the child is sick looking febrile uh spo2 at room temperature is 91 and with minimum oxygen is 100% there is generalized erythematous somewhat itchy macular fever rash edema all over the body with a preponderance the peri uh, peri orbital area again there is a cervical lymph node on both the side which are multiple non tender discrete soft to form in consistency 2 by 3 cm largest in the submandibular area scattered lymph node in the left axillary area there is no pallor no icterus no bony veins i throat lymph is normal so two groups of lymph nodes are involved so we have got the fever we have got the rash we have got the edema and we have got the lymph node and the child is lethargic but arousable there are no manifest signs air antibile normal cvs prominent for third sound no murmur there is edema over the abdominal wall liver 4 cm below costal margin with a span of 10 cm form in consistency non tender and spleen is not proper so there is hepatomegaly as well so anyone can take this sir so you, i want to go back sir with the history anyone sir yes sir let's try to start please child here the initial till we are knowing the past history child got a fever then after 3 days child got a rash so it is very unlikely to be uh, you routine condition like measles or rubella like here because uh, rash appeared after 3 days something like that so there's no question like that then here there is question of jaundice uh, rash so and irritability also so one at this point we are thinking about cause like this is something like that because child got irritable but age is not uh, favoring but age is not favoring that is another uh, this one then we are thinking about the past history past history you got uh, some joint pain abdominal pain and uh, blood in the stool so we are thinking about uh, some immunological you know, reaction in connection with uh, that one in the form of some Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Please. This is. I relate this with the illness which has come next after five weeks. So it is a multi-system involved. So what is happening? The patient has got fever. Patient has got rash. Patient has got hepatomegaly. Patient has got knee hit or maybe some edema because of other reasons. So there are multiple systems involved. So. Uh, and lymph node. And, and, and lymph node. And lymph node. all these things indicate that i am dealing with a multi system involvement and uh, because of maybe this illness and if it's because of that it is some autoimmunity because of related to that there is one thing coming i need more information to uh, make up my mind what i am exactly dealing with so now we want to add something yeah. because uh, history is very short right now at present fever is of almost 8 days so it will be little difficult to early to uh think of autoimmune disorder right, right at this place because then there can be a acute on chronic but there is, there is maybe no past history before 5 no, weeks no child might be sick and some limb limb node may be sitting before two, since 2 months it may be there uh, maybe one of the organs but we would like to know the progress with the past history the bloody stools and the joint involvement probably i'm thinking of campylobacter jejuni but it doesn't extend to this level yeah it's it, Campylobacter cannot go so long. So this is a rash. Uh, of course, uh, this is there is the convalescent phase, but you can see some discoloration also is there. So now uh, anyone can take this. A pretty sick child, fever, rash, rash of short illness, lymphadenopathy, epidemic edema. What are the likely possibilities? Some kind of infection like rickettsia, because uh, there is fever, rash, lymphadenopathy, edema, and hepatomegaly. The classical many. But in Gujarat we don't have that. Yeah. that, that no, it's not like that because but we may be. Still, we can have it because it. of this. Yeah. yeah, we can have this. So, because if so you have a patient like, is pretty sick, so with this rash, yeah, edema. Yeah, it can be there. Even uh, rickettsia can present as. No, only rickettsia. Then what else? What else? What else? Uh, Multi-system intermittent disease. Yeah. Very very orbital edema can be seen. It's a typhus. Yeah. It can be seen. can be um things like uh, can be but seen in what about dengue rashes are not that what about dengue shock dengue shock 
in this case it is unlikely but can not yeah so it is against this yeah so uh, it could be uh, out of these vehicles yeah. from sickness i won't put it because joint yeah. involvement is very yeah. common so dengue so, can it be septic shock sir septic shock no no it cannot, it cannot be, because, be. Yeah. and what about toxic shock syndrome no miss again lymphadenopathy miss see? and miss see? yeah past year you are seeing currently this patient so when a child has got a fever when rash huh? when this patient see huh but which months uh this in the no no in rainy season during rain uh, yes, yes yes during yes, yes. covid time so it is not it is not missing so it is <laughs> not missing <laughs> yeah <laughs> epidemiology is so important so yeah. and can possibility of looking at the rash it looks like you can include what? seven johnson you can take it out to the top no no this is the all the causes with the fever rash and unstable vitals so we, it can be anything in this i think the dengue is unlikely septic shock is unlikely tss miss see so what possibly remains is the scrub typhus or it can be a kd or it can be stevens johnson by any drug rash right yeah. yeah so now how to proceed we have to take a, so we just start antibiotic dr prajin this case we have already started vancomycin septran clindamycin would you start antibody or not that is what we have done don't have a uh, clinical diagnosis if you don't have a clinical diagnosis is just giving a wide spectrum and just to wait for the report but it's a you may have no narrow spectrum little no but we can't uh, straight away I'm start with all three drugs together you know but i was very sick very sick yeah, but no, so still three antibodies are not in No, it's not like that. There is. I feel that just is no there is there just is a science behind it. See, what is this? Shock. I think what so is gra gram positive, gram pro negative, and toxin. All three have been covered. So I will let Mayor Pano. Toxin. Edema, sir. Edema is there. There is lot. Edema is there. Edema is not. Edema, uh, hepat, hepat. Not edema indicated. Edema, you are uh, resisting with capillary disease. Ah, yes. But any any toxic related illness any vascular can have any but still all three antibiotics no ma'am without the then what would you have given that's why i'm asking you know they, that answer i don't get from any other person we could we could have like uh, send few more investigation no no based on this answer at least only just septic right okay like not that. not all you getting and there's no uh, uh, kidney functions are okay 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 i'm kidney coming to that yeah. okay okay yeah. So these are the reports. Uh, hemoglobin 18. Uh, total count is little high, 18,000. Poly 63, lympho 32, eosinophil 5%, platelet 1.98, ESR 24, CRP 32, SDPT, SDOT uh, 240 and 173 respectively. PTINR 1.1. Uh, serum albumin 3, blood urea 48, creatinine 0.8, urine examination normal. And sodium is one thirty nine. Blood uh, culture. Sirde, I think uh, seriously think of dressing. Hmm. Seriously, you should think of dressing. Okay. So. Red urea. Yeah. Yes, and with five percent. Yeah. Mm. And so, if you look at the absolute, yeah, count is also there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you have eagle eyes, sir. So blood culture is awaited. N S O negative, serology negative, H E V I G M negative, O H N T O negative. Extra prominent be at both sides and sonography by them and reveal mild hepatomegaly, normal echostructure with minimal of the acid. So why this dress in the sir? Is there uh, drugs given by the keto? Is there active care? Fever is there? Lymphadenopathy is there? And multi-system involvement is there? But yeah. Calcium need to make exactly that exactly. Um, you you hit the nail. So yeah, I will not go on the further progress. The fever spike increasing, edema increased. Only thing is. Sometimes edema. That's the only thing against. Yeah. But sometimes it may lead to capillary. In dress syndrome, you have to only only and the rashes start in the face first, whereas in Stephen Johnson's rashes start yeah. in the trunk. That's the only thing that is. Now, sir, when we did the further follow-up, child was having high spiky fever. You can see that uh, eosinophil is fourteen percent. So again, it ah uh, 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 yes, it is that. But you need the procal is two point four. So I will take this. Okay. 
So dress is a diagnosis by exclusion, sir. Dress is a diagnosis except CBC. What? I think you should state everything. And you give a uh, you give a warning in bed also. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we did also it, all the serology which are negative to scrub, dengue, ferritin C89, D dimer, 650, because of edema, the ECOVAS which was normal. And liver lymph node biopsy was also done because of the carvus period. Uh, again, it turned out to be negative. There is a reactive hyperplasia with uh, preserved nodal architecture, and there was mixed cellular infiltrate of small lymphocyte, eosinophil lymphocyte, and findings are suggestive of inflammatory disorder rather than infective etiology. And what Sir is saying that there is a history of drug exposure, there is fever, there is rash, lymph node, two organs affected, hepatitis, eosinophilia, the sepsis, and shock like presentation. So it's a Register criteria about dress syndrome and almost three out of five is required. This patient has nearly four criteria, so it turned out to be a case of dress syndrome. We started with the steroid and child responded well. So our expert has held the, uh, hit the nail exit. So the third case, a 10 year old boy, previously healthy, fever for 10 days, high grade, often associated with chills, occurring mostly at nights, and relieved with oral paracetamol. There is history of loose motion, six days, seven to eight per day, without blood or mucus. Abdominal pain for four to five days, localized periumbilical without any specific exacerbating or the relieving factors or radiation. A vomiting for the last three days, treated outside by family physician with IV fluid, some injection. Past history, personal history, family history, nothing special. So I think, can you quickly one or two different diagnoses with this history? Since the child has fever since almost 10 days, so uh, could, uh, like we have to think of cause and associated with loose motion. So uh, any infection, like any viral infection can be there, which has uh, prolonged some way, somewhat. And uh, even entry fever, fever viral, also you can think High grade of, fever, 10 days. Yeah, so by day likely, four or five viral would have been yeah, either so complicated entry or fever, recovered. Of course, is a first possibility we have to think of and uh, investigate further for that. How about pancreatitis, so, madam? Pancreatitis usually, it can be there. Yeah, but we need to uh, investigate further. We would yeah. like to. So again, it's a varied, uh, this again, enteric fever, gastroenteritis, viral, pancreatitis, dengue, any kind of girl. So we investigate this. And the child was conscious for it. I will not go much there, but the liver was three centimeter, spleen two centimeter. Rest of the system is normal. There is no pallor, no icterus, no clubbing, and vitally child is stable. So now, uh, Dr. Anand, yeah. which industry would you do? Yeah, madam, I'm rightly mentioned because the start with the greatest symptom, now mildest capital spleen magali, liver 2 3 centimeter, spleen again 2 centimeter. So we have to first give the possibility of enteric fever. Yeah. So here is the CBC, is the 10, total count is 8600, which is normal. Uh, again, second is also hemoglobin 9.6, uh, CRP is 121, SDPT 51, SDOT 89, electrolytes normal and blood culture avoided. Malaria antigen test negative, NS1 serology, serum MLIs and lipids were also within normal limit. And we did, there is a US hepatosplenal megaly. The TCD is showing a low eosinophilia. Eosinophilia count is 1 and 0. How does it matter, sir? There is, there is eosinophil 1 and then eosinophil 0. There is some documentation like that. Eh? So, Dr. Kukreja, what is your take on eosinophil enteric fever? Normally, see eosinophilia in cases of enteric fever, and uh, um, I think one of uh, our fellow has done study on that. And uh, eosinophilia is quite a common phenomenon. But its absence will not rule out. And I think fever. in these counts, the only unusual thing against enteric is normally they have a relative neutrophilia compared to uh, lymphocytes. That's the only uh, yeah. unusual thing. Otherwise, CRP of high, SGPT increase, all yeah. these things are seen in enteric fever. Yeah. And clinically, it fits into enteric fever. Yeah. So we did also the blood culture. It's positive and sensitive to septoraxin. Now we have started septoraxin in a perfect dose, and there is no thrombophilic thing. So Dr. Uh, uh, Neminathan, there is no response on day six. Again, spiking fever, another one, child is deteriorating. So what yeah, are the possibilities? Probably there is some complication related to salmonic infection. I, I would uh, I, I probably uh, like to add on another, another drug like astromycin or I would like to think of 
uh, because considering resistant organism or like to think of some uh, something like hlh uh, following salmonella typhi yeah dr sonal bhai usually salmonella typhi and trick fever no, on day 6 what would you usually response our 90 99% patients receptrexone sensitivity is there so again we can add uh, uh, azithromycin and as well as investigate further for the some immunological complications of enteric fever like secondary hlh and we would like to repeat the cbc and see for the diagnosis like whether the other series Dr. Kukla, you will add the drug no, or change uh, the drug? I I don't add it. Yeah, exactly. I have so, and uh, whenever there is a patient not improving, I think there should be effort made to investigate what is happening to this patient, yeah. why this patient is not improving. And number one, I look at the MICs. The MICs in my center are okay to ceftriaxone. Yeah, okay, I'm quite with happy. That. Yeah. And we hardly have any resistance to ceftriaxone as being reported from. Uh, ंग Hyperdysplasia level has increased. The distance and is there. You can see the count. The hemoglobin is falling. The platelet is falling. CRP is rising, and you can see that ESR, which was previously eighty, now forty-eight and twenty-three. So, what is happening to this? So, oh, any uh, hemoglobin is also falling. Total count is also decreasing, and platelets are also uh, decreasing. So, it always favors some immunological complications. So, so we must investigate. But why for child is such sick and ESR is falling? No, because it is a immunological HLH is maybe uh, uh, developing. So, in that condition, you have bone marrow involvement. But organomegaly further increased. It has increased. Mark it. See, in HLH, uh, ESR and e uh, your uh, CRP they move in different directions. ESR goes down. And you are CRP. Yeah. So normally this is what happens. So there is so both are in opposite paradoxical. CRP is rising, ESR is falling, child is worsening. So there is hypofibrinogenemia, and because of the low fibrinogen, the ESR is falling. So in a otherwise unwell child, a falling ESR is a sign of ill omen. So I think. Uh, did you do triglycerides and ferritin, sir? Huh? Triglycerides and ferritin. Uh, I'm coming to that. Yeah. Yeah. So with all the viral viral markers negative, so. We have also started meropenem, and you can see that uh, ferritin is 5,000, triglyceride is 563, and we did. So now uh, anyone can take. We see lot of infection. And post COVID, we usually do when the illness persists for more than four or five days. We do ferritin left and right. So what you take? It is infection, it is non-infection, or it is always HLH. We are getting lot of cases of HLH due to so many infections. I heard uh, dengue fever. All this we are getting very common. Actually, we are getting. Yeah. Okay. Sir, if there is a if there is a unexpected uh, response, for example, in this patient, you are expecting a response with ceftriaxone, and child is suddenly becoming sick, and there is a bicytopenia, and ESR is falling. It's very very suggestive that this patient has got into HLH. In that situation, no, in, in our center, sometimes with thousands of ferritin, and there is immediately we send TG and ferritin, and if these two are high, we are very suggestive that we are dealing with. No, but sometimes only ferritin is high. Aspirin, dengue, sometimes mm -hmm. suspect is a soja. Ferritin is very high. So I do you to relate with clinical condition. Yeah. It's very important to relate with clinical condition. So bone marrow also suggestive of the HLH, and these are the criteria for the HLH. You were more than 38 degree point five. Splenomegaly, bilateral uh, 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 peripheral blood, bicytopenia, hypertriglyceridemia, which was there, hemoglobin in bone marrow, and ferritin, which is more than five. So I think five of eight criteria should be there, and this child was uh, uh, a case of HLH following enteric fever. We started with IV dexamethasone, and we can discharge hemoglobin 10.2 and platelet was 98,000. Now it's 2.33x. So it's a case of enteric fever complicated by HLH. So this is the third case. We finish it. Uh, Only one sentence each of from you. We were personal limpet on party. Can I be control? I have fourth place, but I think I will honor the time. Yeah. Good. So.
देखो मैसेज एनी कॉमन लाइक इन्फेक्शन लाइक एंट्रिक फीवर एंड डेंग्यू समथिंग लाइक दैट इफ दे फॉलो द अनयूजल कोर्स लाइक इफ इन दिस केस इफ द सेप्ट्राइक्सोन बिकॉज सेप्ट्राइक्सोन सेंसिटिविटीज रेजिस्टेंस इज अनोन सो इफ पेशेंट फेल्स टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू कल्चर पॉजिटिव सालबोनेला टाइफाइ एंड परसिस्टेंट कंटिन्यूस टू हैव द फीवर एंड अलॉन्ग विथ इट इफ देर इज अ हिपैटोमेगैली एंड बोन मैरो इन्वॉल्वमेंट सो वी मस्ट लुक फॉर द इम्यूनोलॉजिकल कॉम्प्लिकेशन इन टाइम and uh, investigate accordingly and treat accordingly yeah, I mean. yeah to the youngsters uh, all fevers are not infectious and all infections are not bacterial and antibiotics is not antipyretic in a case like first case huge hepatitis pneumonia you have to think about the rare conditions and even though culture is native then you have to do extended culture and some other important initiation so really think about rare condition like brucellosis brucellosis also you have to consider what i practice in my uh, this thing is i i tell my all fellows and my uh, consultants uh, whenever you have a patient coming to the uh, uh, emergency room or the opd in a case of infection if you take a good blood sample per culture i think lot of your uh, problems are solved and take a adequate amount and, and take a paired culture and if you don't do that then you are hitting the bush not knowing what you are doing yeah so it's very very important that at the onset have a good culture paired culture and so that a lot of problems can be solved so thank you all the panelists expert uh, opinion thank you everybody thank you abhay sir and all the panelists for wonderful session